there with you. His honor, his hands, and his, as she was singing that song, his hands are always there to protect me. His arms are there. His heart searches and quiet weeps every time I fail him. But let me tell you something. His eyes are always on his children. His ears are always in tune with us. And when we cry out, Abba, Father, when we cry out to God, he hears us. And I'm telling you right now, if God hears an honest cry, if he hears a sincere cry from one of his children, he's going to stop and it's going to get his attention. And he's going to come back and give you that which you've asked for. Why? Because the word of God says so. It doesn't make any difference. We put limitations on God. But I'm telling you today, church, if we just get those limitations off of him and praise God, just trust God for each and everything that we have a need of. It doesn't matter if it's a healing. It doesn't matter if it's a financial blessing. It doesn't matter if it's deliverance. It doesn't matter if it's a new home, a new car. It doesn't make any difference if you let God know what you have need of and you believe his word and believe what he's saying. I promise you that God will deliver. He will deliver all things. Why? Because the word of God, Brother Chuck, says whatsoever you ask, whatsoever, hallelujah, that covers a lot of things to me. He said whatsoever you ask, believing, doubting nothing, that you shall have. And I'm telling you right now, Brother Mike, that covers everything on planet Earth. That covers everything in the under heaven. That covers everything, brother, that you can think of. And that's what that says to God that I serve today. He's going to, he said, I got a place prepared for you, David. He didn't say I've got a mansion prepared. He said in my father's house are many mansions. And he said, I go to prepare a place for you. And that little place, I don't care if it's a three by three corner. Listen, if as long as I'm in the kingdom of heaven, as long as I'm there with Christ, I'm going to be just as happy as if I had the biggest mansion on earth. And he said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And he said, I'm coming back to get you. The only thing is he didn't tell me when. He didn't give me an hour or a day. And thank God he didn't. But you know, he ain't ready for me yet. He's not ready for me yet. Now, he's getting me prepared to go. But he's not ready for me yet because he's still got a work for me to do. If he wanted me there, I would go right now. If he, When Jesus gets ready for me, uh, he's going to call me home. And it's going to be, uh, uh, it's gonna be a by earth. Uh, hello, Jesus. I mean, it's going to be that fast. It's going to be, hello, Lord. But church, we have to be ready. And this is why we have the telecast. This is why we have church. Many of you have seen people saved here in the church. A lot of people don't even know what salvation and saved is. Without Christ, without you accepting him into your heart, you're going to die and you're going to go to hell. A lot of people say, well, God will never send me to hell. He's not. You're going to send yourself. If you reject his son, Jesus Christ, well, why in the world did, what's Jesus got to do with all this? A lot of people don't even understand the cross. They don't understand why Christ had to die for them. Man sinned in the Garden of Eden. And when man sinned, Adam sinned, Adam and Eve sinned, they gave dominion of this earth over to Lucifer, over to Satan. And Jesus came to pay the price to buy it back. He came to buy the souls of man back. And he paid the sin debt on Calvary. Man had sin in their natural flesh. We were born in sin. We were conceived in sin. And we lust after sin daily. Our flesh is nothing but sin. Our flesh is controlled by the devil. Your flesh has got you into all the trouble you've ever gotten into. The lust of the flesh got you there. And so the flesh is sin, but there's a spirit inside of us. There's a spirit inside of every person that's going to live forever. The soul of man shall never die. That soul is going to live either with Lucifer or with Christ. It's our decision. But God sent his only begotten son, the only begotten son that he's ever had, Jesus Christ, to come down to earth to walk in a sinful body, a sin flesh body. So that Jesus could see the temptations that man was going to have to go through. Jesus walked in a sin flesh body without sinning. He never gave in to the flesh. He was in a sin flesh body. So that when he stumped his toe, it hurt. He could feel the pain. And when they beat him with the stripes, he could feel the pain. When the blood came out, he could feel the pain. When they punched the, the beat the thorns down on his flesh, he could feel the pain. 
When he drove the nails in his hands and his feet and pierced his side, he could feel the pain. And when good-looking women walked by, the lust was there, but he never gave in to the lust. There's no scripture that says that Jesus never looked at a good-looking woman. There's no scripture there. But he never lusted after a good-looking woman. He never sinned. He never let lust enter his heart, into his heart. And you see, this is where he overcame flesh. He overcame the sins of flesh. He walked for over 30 years, 33 years, I think, altogether. He walked for over 30 years fighting the same temptations that you and I have. There's no temptation ever tempted man that Christ wasn't tempted by. But he didn't fail, fall into temptation. He never fell to flesh. He never fell God. He always served the Lord, his Father. And so this is why we have to have Christ. He died for you. He died for me. Now, I'm talking to the sinners right now. Because I think this message is for somebody out there. You're watching television. You're sitting there with sin in your life. And you know right this moment that I'm talking to you. I'm speaking directly to you. And you know that if the death angel would come this moment and your heart would stop beating, you'd probably spend eternity in hell. Because I don't care how good of life you've lived, you can't get to heaven on good looks. You can't get to heaven on good deeds. Living good. There's a lot of good people right now busting hell wide open. There's a lot of good church-going people in hell right now wishing that somebody had told them the truth. Truth is, you must be born again. You read the book of John, chapter 3. You just read the gospel according to St. John, chapter 3. Just read chapter 3 and ask God to give you an understanding of it because Christ clearly tells us, except you're born again, you're not going to enter or inherit the kingdom of God. You can't see the kingdom of God, and you cannot enter the kingdom of God except you be born again. You have to be born of the flesh which you're already born of the flesh, the water, the flesh, but you also have to be born of the Spirit. So you have to have a spiritual birth. And so the key thing right now is you've never seen anything like heaven. You've never heard anything like heaven. And I can preach all day and not tell you what heaven's all about. Only the Spirit can do that. Only God can do that. But you have to have Christ in your heart. You have to repent from the sin and come out of sin. I'm going to say a simple sinner's prayer. This prayer has led people to the Lord all over the world. And if God's dealing with your heart, I want you to repeat this prayer with me. And he'll save your soul if you truly mean it. Father God, I come before you today. I have sin in my life. And I'm asking you, Father, to forgive my sins. Place them under the blood of Jesus. For I believe in my heart. And I'm confessing with my mouth that Jesus is the Son of God. And that you have raised him from the dead. This moment, I invite Jesus Christ of Nazareth to come into my heart to be my Savior, to be Lord of my life. I'm asking you, Father, to write my name in the Lamb's book of life and seal me with the Holy Ghost of promise until the day of redemption. For I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you said that prayer, there's a toll-free number on the screen. Dial that number. We'd love to pray with you. Pray for this ministry always. Support us when you can. And remember, Jesus is the answer around the world. God bless you.